why we started this, it was a question that we had been, you know, kind of grappling with. Yeah, grappling with, and it, it's really simple. It's if I knew then what I know now, um, what would I do differently? Mm. Um, so, I mean, Olga and I have known each other for <laughs> 20 Quite years. It's been impossible. It's yes. yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, so so we we, we have um, you know I keep I keep saying you know Olga is my uh, I, I describe her as a hyper connector, um, a sister's keeper for sure, and um, somebody who um, really 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 is a believer without a doubt. So um, at the, at, at what we really wanted to do was create um, a platform for believers or anybody who is um, trying to find their place in. A, you know, kind of whether it's like moving the trees um, in shaping this collective that we have, which mm -hmm. um, we, we, we can describe as Africa. Africa to, to us is, can be a country, but it can also be 54, 55, 56 states, including the African diaspora. Mm -hmm. um, so understanding that that interconnectedness um, um, is really, really the foundation that we created, um, created ARCH. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and um, one of our guiding principles is the spirit or philosophy of Afro-optimism, which we are very um, you know, excited about, um, especially with the emergence of this vibrancy across the continent, uh -huh. um, you know, the culture and creative industry, the tech industry, everyone's excited about this young population. Um, <clears throat> but for our pilot podcast, um, our pilot season on the podcast, we started off with, you know, paying tribute and paying homage to the matriarchs. So these are women who, um, Oh, you know, they were born in the 60s, so 60, 1963 is when Uganda got independence. And, um, <laughs> yeah, independence. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, at that time, these women had to face so many obstacles in their personal lives um, to be the women that they are. Um, we've already put out uh, one episode so far, but I think by the time this viewing, there'll be two episodes two. out. I think so. Slow yeah, down. yeah. It's it's Bambi. It's like British. <laughs> by the way, we're doing it the <laughs> we're doing it like the British miniseries. Where you know how mm. Sherlock is like Sherlock. one hour thirty minutes. Quality. Three. Thank you, Joe. Thank yeah, you, Joe. We yeah. <laughs> um, but it will be like a five-part feature. It um, our intro episode, which is introduction to um, the African Renaissance and Afro optimism, sets us off. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have these four women that we speak to. Um, yeah, you can if you check out our Instagram, Atrix Africa. You you know who the four women are. So yeah, just go to yeah, like and follow that. In the yes, link. somewhere, somewhere. Mm. <laughs> So yeah. I, maybe I'll start by asking a question. I know you guys are supposed to ask me questions, yes. but like a typical man. Right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what, yes, what is Afro-optimism? Hmm. I think in a nutshell, in the, it's most, the most simple way, it's, um, I, we describe it as a lens in which we see possibilities. Um, um, there is, we all know that there's this narrative that the continent has had for a very long time, dark, um, you know, problem filled, poverty, etc. Um, however, there's also very beautiful things that are percolating across the continent. It has, it has, it, 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 it's, we've seen it over the years, over the decades, and probably over the centuries. And there's a lot of um, emphasis now about Africa telling its own stories, redefining the African narrative, um, and, and taking full control and shaping our collective future. You know, and it's really based on 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 it's on that premise that that we then adopt and really encourage everybody to adopt the 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 the, the philosophy of Afro optimism. I describe myself an an Afro optimist. It's really really simple. Do you believe? Are you a believer? And uh, believing can be very many things. Um, do you see possibilities in places that people have probably considered? You know, mm -hmm. done wasted, um, completed. Yeah. And we see that a lot in, 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 in our current, I think, in our current space. We hear a lot of there's a renaissance happening, but this time it's not necessarily politically driven, similar to what we saw in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Now we are seeing, you know, music, fashion, cultural diplomacy becoming um, an instrumental tool for um, African identity to, to influence and really shape global mm -hmm. discourse. So yeah. our music is traveling, our fashion is traveling, our, um, mostly our arts, mm -hmm. um, and, and that soft power becomes a very, you know, fascinating ground um, on which we then we, we, we then collectively build. But going back to 
what Olga mm -hmm. actually said about why we're very fascinated with, with, in our chase to go forward the future, we found ourselves pulling back to the kind of the like past. the past. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I will reference, let me see, there is um, there's a, a Ghanaian novelist, I think it's called Amakwe. Mm -hmm. Amakwe, so he published a book, a novel in the 1960s. Now at that particular time, almost all African nations were, 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 were you know, freshly new, being born. And, and, and he, 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 the book was called The Beautiful Ones Are Not Here Yet. And what it born. Yes, are not yeah, yet born yeah. or are not yeah, here yeah. yet. Yeah. yeah. So he's what he meant was that even even <laughs> if um, these new nations are being birthed, the uncorrupted ones to take it forward are not there yet. So it was a very fascinating um, that the leadership that was taking over from colonial rule did not necessarily have. Um, have um, the two or the, the consistent belief in shaping the Ac Africa that we wanted to see for his context, Ghana. But it was it it, it spilled across the um, across almost all, all the other countries. For a country like South Africa, we see 1994 class. They are called the Born Freeze. Mm -hmm. So his idea was we want we we hope to see an Africa where the beautiful ones who are the uncorrupted ones, the ones who are not looking for, um, you know, what benefits them. It's, they are looking at um, how do we go as a collective and build this, this, this space. Now you see that same theme featuring in multiple other themes, like Okot Bitek um, also highlights that, but interestingly, they also paint a very colorful, futuristic, Africa where, you know, um, full of opportunities, abundance and, and, and stuff like that. And literature has evolved. We have seen the way African stories have been told, the times, you know, those war images, it's now like Africa, the time is now, mm -hmm. you know, the, the greatest Africa continent. Africa rising. Africa rising. We begin yeah. to see those, 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 those pieces of, <coughs> of, of language on a, global, um, on, on a global front. But the interesting thing is now we are also seeing an internal percolation. It's not the West validating, mm -hmm. it's really it's really within. coming from within. Yeah. So in that really, in that essence, yes, we have our challenges, we have our peculiarities, mm -hmm. but um, there's also beauty in the chaos that even when things are not meant to work, they are for some way working. Young people have chosen to work with what they have yeah. <laughs> to still be able to build um, um, regardless of the, whether the, the infrastructure is, 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 is um, working in their favor or not. Tech is a big enabler. We talk about leapfrogging a lot, but we have really seen the, the, the power of, of, of people choosing just to believe whether you build that up or you, you know what the theory, educate people. Yeah, it's, it's those little pockets of believers you know, um, amidst the noise that become the foundation of, of Afro-optimists. And yeah, yeah, in a nutshell, that's it. That's a mouthful, but I hope that provides <laughs> yeah. some context. Yeah. No, I think you've paid it like um, the due homage. I had many questions like ringing right now at the time. Um, <clears throat> one is, uh, I remember Malcolm X at some point when they asked him why did he call himself X? Mm. And his view at the time was there was a return to Africa. Like let's let's make sure we go back. Mm -hmm. And he said, I, "Why are you taking me back? I am a I'm a new thing. Uh -huh. Of course, this is part of my history. It's part of my story. Uh -huh. But the X meant that there is a new thing coming forward. Uh. And I um, I don't know how you feel about this, both of you. Sometimes when I would engage with this literature, what I found was a mix of optimism, but also a mix of I don't know if it's reactionary, but it was like let the the sense of loss uh -huh. that we had, they say, okay, we got colonized, our lands were taken over, and then we lost something, uh -huh. and now we're trying to <coughs> reclaim it. Reclaim it but yeah. when I speak to the older people in my family, uh -huh. they have a different take on it. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm fascinated by was, what did it feel like, like my father was, he saw the Union Jack go down. Go down. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. And he said, like, what did it feel for you? And he's like, well, I, at some point, he had mixed feelings because the, old ways were also not perfect, mm. right? Mm. But there's something about when you lo lose it, mm -hmm. you look back as if, man, it was pristine perfect. and yeah. we're okay and we're mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, when you talked about looking back, when you look back, what are the things that you kind of are retrieving from you know, our history, from our mm -hmm. culture mm -hmm. that you think we are going to take forward? But also how do you, I guess, maybe see some of the things that, well, that one I don't think we're going to Neat. carry forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good question, Joel. Yeah. I think identity of course everyone's going through a sort of identity crisis right yeah. now um but i think the sense of self 
um, there is this, you know, know thyself, right? Yeah. Um, so what we are trying to question ourselves, you know, on um, increasingly is, okay, do people truly know who, you know, who they are, what their origins are? I'm very embarrassed to say that I don't speak my language fluently. But mm -hmm. see, I can hear and uh, re you respond. Can I can box. Yeah. The hearing is great, mm. but the uh, response isn't great, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a concoction of languages yeah. to respond. Um, but going back to that cultural identity, um, can you speak your language? Can you, um, you know, gather your brethren under mm -hmm. a tree, for instance, uh -huh, and like uh -huh. come together and um, try to figure out what needs to be done collectively in order to move the community forward, right? Uh -huh. um, can you, um, so I'm, I'm just thinking about it in the context of like community, mm -hmm. um, in the context of um, identifying who, you know, we call them destiny helpers, who in the community can actually help uh -huh. move things forward mm. um, as we build a new, um, in the context of building mutual trust. Uh -huh. So it's, it's those, Values in essentially, so going back to certain values that were very strong and very key on like building societies mm -hmm. um, and you know helping move them forward. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So things like communal sharing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, right now there's a lot of individualism that's like starting yeah. to creep up here and there, yeah. and um, people are very isolated. You could be going through a very, very massive challenge and no one in your friend circle would know, but ah, when it comes time to drink, sir, let's go drink. But mm. you're not, <laughs> you're not like collectively um, transparently saying, hey, I'm going through this thing and I need my community mm. to help me go through it, right? Mm. Um, and of course, it's, um, it's a double-sided coin because there's also aspects of like things like black tax, which I think <laughs> is a chip on every, you know, mm -hmm. black person's shoulder. But I think it's the way you phrase it. Is it that by me understanding my responsibility and the the um, the community having paid my school fees and me having like risen through the ranks in my role to be like, I need to pay it forward in order to build out, you know, my community. So it's it's those elements. And I think it's by identif by building thyself, right? You're now able to build out the community, build out the nation. There's, there's so many things that in our Kampala we're seeing today that are just very, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had to come yeah. back to that, right? Which is um, over the holidays, you see like little kids like selling you know bananas by the street mm -hmm. and i'm like how many bananas do these kids have to sell in order to help them pay school fees yeah. but maybe if there was a way that you know we could proactively say knowing what we know mm -hmm. maybe um help guide maybe their parents mm -hmm. on like c coming up with like a circle or something so that they're able to like save money and they'll be able to pay fees. So it's it's not as simple as I've phrased it, uh. but I think it's the the divorce of like ah my pro the problems are too many. I I don't see my how I can contribute to make that change. Uh. But I think it's a reflection of like if I know who I am, I know my community. Then how does that mm -hmm. spill over to making things better? Yeah. yeah, I think for me, building on what yeah Olga's beautifully said, for me it's it's. Um, Maybe twofold, but particularly I have been, I mean, the media, how do we, cons we are shaped by what we read, see, and hear. Mm -hmm. That's really what the media space is. Mm -hmm. So that stories or whatever is presented to you becomes a foundation or truth mm, that you then play with. I've been on a very serious quest for compound, like, Af compounded knowledge and, and the reason I say that is um, we hear a lot of Africa dark continent mm. you did not document mm. and for a long time to be honest I was like yeah honestly there was there was just nothing probably to, 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 to be documented but now as I either as a kind of dug a bit deeper I found that it's just that it's not that we, it wasn't documented. The, mo the, the medium in which it was documented mm -hmm. was maybe different, right? Mm -hmm. So our documentation, whether it was oral stories, whether it was in our fashion, our hair, yeah. Yeah. there was the, 
in it, we were sending and documenting in intangible ways. Mm. And, 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 and it hit me really, really hard when my grandmother, she was 106, she died. We are here at her funeral and she survived by 500, I don't descend, she had like five, mm. four generations. But because she died too old, um, her people who actually experienced her or knew her were not really there to give us any context. So I know her as my grandmother, but I really don't know her. Yeah. So here we are at her, <laughs> we at her funeral, and apart from the date of birth <laughs> and the death date, yeah. there's like 80 years of someone's life which mm. was just not there. Yeah. And as she was buried, in my mind, I was... I looked at her house and she said, this is someone who has lived on these grounds for 80 years. And now there's dust, there's like no representation. Yeah. But in my head, I was like, this is a museum. It's in time, this, my village is a museum. It's a museum yeah. and it's intangible. We just, her stories are buried there, but they, are, they were just not written or it's told. Yeah. And then I started, looking at almost the place so everywhere we walk sit play was is actually a living museum it's just intangible like what you said about the the kololo mm. um independence oh, we yeah, passed there yeah. it's boring yeah. but on, in 1962 yeah. there was this entire experience yeah. right so everywhere pioneer mall has gone down but yeah. like every place we are yeah. in is a was has history pegged to it, yeah. it was intangible. So I went yeah. on a quest of how do you document the intangible? How do you document a museum of ghosts? That to me is when I realized a lot of African history is intangible. Uh, Shameless plug, please tell us about you tell a museum. Oh, no. uh, uh, there we go, there we go. No so, um, this girl no, 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 in no. 2014 was talking about VR. Yeah, that's where it began because for me, I was like, how do you document the intangible? And the mediums, the medium that we have right now did not necessarily allow us to have the full multi-sensory immersive mm. experience. Like I can have a video, but it, I can't go into the video, I can't relive it. Mm. Um, it's recorded static based on time, it's, ba it's locked to time and space. If I go to the Ugandan museum, it's also locked to time and space. The space can only accommodate a certain number of objects and it can only live in a particular place. While it has memo um, kind of memorial history of you know, pieces of, of things, it's not going to capture my family's history. I can't find mm -hmm. that in the Uganda Museum. When you go, however, and that's the beauty of kingdoms, and that's how the Britain has been able to, 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 to really sell itself. Mm -hmm. These guys the and Buganda Kingdom has done it. It has 900 years of history. Mm -hmm. Like you can, it, the sun's, it, it traces it now. It has about nine, I think 900 years. Um, so when you go to the palace of, um, what well, it's the Buckingham Palace, you mm -hmm. find they have 900 years of photographic representation mm -hmm. of their ancestors. You said we don't have photographs yeah. of, <laughs> of our, now I don't have photographs of my grandmother. Yeah. I don't know what she, he was going to make a point. Alan, say what you want to say. Say what you want to say, yes. Uh, sorry, for, for cutting you short. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think I attended the funeral of one of my grandfathers, yeah. who was like rich, his daughters and like government and what, mm -hmm. but there was no picture. Like they got a picture yeah. and it was at some wedding and stuff, and that was the picture. And so like, I pitched to them, like, how about drive, yeah. take a drive to the village? Take, I mean, it's a bit morbid, but take pictures of all the old people there, yeah. so that in case they die, it's like at least uh, yeah. a picture. You yeah. can be Brilliant. Like, oh, exactly. Yeah. And even as that's why I have my Instagram account for when my oh, yeah. wow. now that's the beauty. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of digital footprint. Yeah. Is that it allows there's some uh, there's also having a static fiction. Say, oh this one. But do we know our parents? Do you know mm. their favorite food, their favorite colour? Mm. What were they doing on fourth 14th February 19, I do not know what, you know, we, 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 we know them as our parents, but the, granu the kind of like granular level is almost, you, you hear things from people and you're like, ah, that's my, pet, my yeah. father, you're very unfamiliar. Digital has allowed us to get into the mind, oh, this is what Olga was thinking on this particular day, and, 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 and that becomes an archive of the mind of, of, of Olga, yeah. um, and, and that's the part 
which and be, beyond the accolades we can describe your career and stuff but the, the person who the person was so in my I was really fascinated with how do we document the intangible and for me it was um, 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 that's when you know it was tinkering with is there such a thing as a virtual reality I was in 20 way 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 before um, it came you know kind of, of, of public and I was like that is exactly before what Marky Mark is. tried to say it to us it was, yeah you get to the metaverse yeah the, the, yeah so um, <laughs> And I, in, it was exactly that, can I go back? It was, I think it was, a, 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 a can I time travel? Mm. And film has allowed us to get yeah. you know, a lot of that, but can I, can I time travel to 1960? And the, 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 the Kololo thing is very, because if you see the videos, BBC can. did some really fantastic job documenting that. So if somebody stands there today at 8 p.m., and, and, and immerses, and you're hearing the sound, you're mm. looking around and you think this is, women were in Gomez's. It was a whole experience that you will not get, it's immersive, you yeah. won't get necessarily in a film. So I, w I, I went down that path of, of exploring um, virtual worlds. And um, that's really, mm. if she's yeah, talking about television, yeah. that's how it, yeah. it, it there's a, yeah. Well, there's a, a thought process now. I've been really immersed in it myself. Mm. It's, a, uh, it's called the reality of the virtual. Mm. And it's based on, um, <clears throat> I guess, the psychoanalytic form of the way we think is there's the imaginary, mm -hmm. so like the way we see things, feel them, like the things that are most immediate. Mm -hmm. Then there's the symbolic, like what does something mean? Yeah. When I see a certain sign, it, it conveys information more than what is yeah. standing there. But then there's a third element, which is the real. Mm. And the real is like an intrusion, the thing that you cannot symbolize, the thing that mm. never comes together. And it shows up in either when you've had a traumatic experience and mm. when trauma comes it means that there is you can't incorporate it into your understanding of the mm. world mm. Um, and <clears throat> you know as you we were talking the argument there is that we already have a virtual reality around us like when i'm looking at you mm. it's not that there is an unobscured yes. vision that um, yes. there, there's there are histories there's what i think about when i look at yes. a woman there's when yeah. someone is speaking a certain way i mean earlier we we're talking about how one of your workmates was saying but you ugandan how can you be earning that much <laughs> at that point <laughs> that there was salary. some there's yeah. some there's always something added and yeah. the example that i really liked was from video games and yeah. from like pokemon yes because like with pokemon you're running around in real life shall yeah. we say uh -huh. but you're looking for something there's an added ingredient to uh, the element of uh -huh. life so um i guess the question i ha what i got from what you were saying is almost that we extract the values yeah. uh -huh. but the values can be expressed in different ways i feel like i carry on uh -huh. the tradition of my family but in a different setting yeah. Yeah. like they my great-grandfather was um mining for salt uh -huh. So there are some ways in which if he came back and saw me living the way he was, he's uh -huh. living, he would say, what's uh -huh. wrong with you? Yeah. And yeah. I, I think that we have a unique task in that uh -huh. um, when you're talking about the ones who are not yet born, I, I, I feel that sometimes we, we, how can I say it? It's very hard to say that I am creating something uh -huh. new uh -huh. that is going to last. But everything that is lasting now was, was created new. by uh, someone. Yeah. So yeah. I think, I don't know what you you're thinking about this but when i was hearing you speak it's almost like the task for this generation mm -hmm. is almost to now define a new to create with you know the yeah. ways that we are going to be doing stuff yeah. but it's also a leap of faith because uh -huh, uh -huh. it's only in a hundred years 200 years that people will look back and say you know those guys set a new bar or they yeah. set us down this path yeah. Yeah. but that sounds like a very heavy duty so do you feel like <laughs> do you feel like it's a a burden is it a privilege sometimes do you get depressed do you feel yeah. like um uh, you talked about afro optimism which i would think is coming in the face of afro pessimism mm -hmm. and for me I, I i find it distasteful a lot of the time when i'm reading otherwise very intelligent people it's all usually the most intelligent the most fortunate amongst mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. who are saying things like not gonna make it low iq mm. population like when i hear mm. things like that yeah. yeah i feel like well yeah um one i, I try not to over psychoanalyze them because yeah. i feel like there is some benefit in you saying everyone else who's like this is not well but i'm yeah. the exception yeah. and i'm exceptional compared to them but, yeah. but that narrative it it's, it finds ready homes uh, yeah. like what you're saying uh, now yeah. people say yeah, yeah it sounds good but then yeah they go back to the baseline yeah. so i'm just wondering how do you carry how do you keep that optimism Aspiring. going and yeah. then how do you not uh, we're talking about we're calling it delulu how do you not fall Sorry, into delusion? Delulu. yeah how do you keep that 
yeah. passion, that fire going, and how do you create that spark in other people? Yeah. And how do you keep that spark within yeah. yourself? Yeah. I think you said, <laughs> so <laughs> Daniel, um, I don't know if it's a shameless plug for Daniel Ka Kaluuya. Mm. I don't know him, but mm. yeah. Um, he was on uh, Jay Shetty's podcast, and he said, the difference between delusion and faith is God. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and sometimes I think you have to almost be delusional to a point of, okay, with everything that's happening around me, what is it that I want to create for the future? Uh -huh. um, so the delusion gets you to a certain point, but I think the faith sustains you to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think um, like for us, um, it's really about exploring the possibilities because we've seen um, yeah. By seeing, you're like, okay, in the, I had the, you know, opportunity to do some um, work in Lagos. Mm. Lagos is a very interesting place. <clears throat> Nigeria itself is a very interesting country. But in Lagos, the heartbeat of entrepreneurship, the heartbeat of, you know, economic productivity in the midst of chaos. Yeah. It is chaotic, but people get things done. Mm -hmm. The light goes off. There's a generator, someone stand by it, you know, because the power keeps on going on yeah. and off, it, yeah. generator is also going on, off, on, off. People's devices die, people buy a Can new be. device because they have, they understand that this thing has to work or it has to work. So I think it's, it's almost having that delusion to get you to a certain point yeah. and faith to sustain you. But um, like I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm also a believer, Christian. Yeah. Um, so sometimes, what? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm yes, Joe. <laughs> I'm one of them. <laughs> one of them. Oh, well, yeah. them. Oh, 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 wow. Yeah. So it's that that like faith knowing. That <laughs> Why are you laughing? I am here. For <laughs> <laughs> I laugh. You know he's a Muslim. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. yeah Pasta, please. Pasta, I, love you. I, ex I am. I explain. I have a whole episode. <laughs> Pasta. Oh, wow. Okay. What for a church? Yeah. For a group of people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A cult. He's a shepherd. 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 So even the way I talk to God, I'm like, bruh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm here for a limited period of time. I need these resources. Yeah. I need to meet these people to get things done. Okay. So I think for me, it's that resting on that, knowing that yeah. I have a purpose to fulfill. Yeah. And almost, you know, a point of delusion, like I said, delusion, then faith. <laughs> so yeah. knowing that um, everything that I'm doing is going to work out. Um, the people that I'm going to meet, um, I'm either going to help change their lives or they're going to help change mine, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the uh -huh. that's what keeps me going. And um, you know, working with Lona who's equally as delusional. <laughs> Cuz this this um I think it's very it's very easy to complain about your problems. The problems are everywhere, I mean. Oh, yes. Yeah. And blame it to someone else. And blame it on someone else. Yeah. But I think you also have to take responsibility yeah. in like, okay, if we're solving this problem, what, what is it that I can do? Yeah. Where do I find the people that have this same delusional mindset to do it? Yeah. And what do we need to get done? Mm. And yeah. just like block out that noise, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah that for is for, for me as me. For you as you. For me, <laughs> honestly, I'll comment on something that you said about Afro, <coughs> like the Afro pessimism, mm -hmm. Afro pessimism. pessimism. And yeah. interestingly, I think pessimists are just frustrated optimists. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're just like guys. They are believe they're just frustrated. That means it just takes a little bit for them to because they they probably see they are just more just frustrated. So they still like become. Things shouldn't be like. Yeah, this. they are frustrated mm -hmm. Afro optimists. So mm. it's just the same. We come back full circle. Mm. But anyway, coming back to, um, you know, is this a burden? Is this, um, do, do we even have the capacity to do this? I mean, I think we are the ones who have been waiting for. I think um, at the end of the day, we are, I, I keep saying we are a remix of our ancestors. We compound knowledge is compounded. Like the generations after will always be better 
I hope so. I hope. <laughs> then, I then the generations hope. <laughs> before, and, and that's how knowledge, that's how humanity has been able to, um, 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 you know, um, live to this this day. But going back to that, for me, my I think Albert and there's a quote Albert Einstein says that every day I wake up and I remind myself this is by the Albert. From <laughs> so every day I wake up. He says, he says <laughs> every day I wake up and I remind myself that my inner and outer life are, are a result and my privileges are a result of the blood, sweat, and tears of the mm. men and women, both dead and alive, those who came before us to allow us um, enjoy some of the things that we are enjoying today. And therefore, I must exact myself in equal measure to give and continue to receive as I have always, um, I, as I have always. And it goes back to when we talk about women, uh, I will use the, 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 the women, for example, where we are now, we are mm. really, really a result of people who blood and sweat for us to be able to get education. It's less than a hundred, yeah. you know, it's, mm. it's like a hundred years. The suffragettes are fight, fighting for women's rights to vote. Now we can, you know, take that for granted, but it's not even less than a hundred years ago. It's a in the yeah, of humanity. absolutely. Yeah. We were yeah. speaking to, um, um, and even like looking at education as it is, today you can walk away with a degree. 50 years ago, mm. Mary Stewart had, you know, three, I don't know how they, mm. they, they had this portrait of, I do not know how yeah. few women. <laughs> yeah. And it's fascinating because even the Queen of England did not have a university degree. Mm. And I think it's her granddaughter the there's one of the, the two one of the two girls they are the first girls in the to to have a university degree yeah. and this is the queen of england yeah. who has really access because even their training was that you were supposed to be trained along the languages so that you could you know be decent enough to um you know nice the world not even call her because she accidentally <laughs> she accidentally took over they from her well. dad yeah. but so that you could probably be a queen married to, yeah. to somebody else so you were yeah. you were trained to 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 have the you know kind of like the pinache for nobility so you would know, Finish. Mm. Is, it, is it no? Yeah, yeah. For no, the, I just want to say it again. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it again. So you had to definitely have that, um, you know, know the different languages, mm. um, so that you could be able. But the the core education you mm. were not. But and if you look at if yeah. you look at her gra the children, the her her sons, um, the Oxbridge were designed for those the, the boys, right? Mm. But the girls didn't even have the opportunity to do that. So when mm. when we, we we take some of the things for granted, for granted where yeah. we are, but there were people who you know. We, 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 we interviewed on the late Honorable Honor, Honor Cecilia Ugal, and she, mm. she, she, she had a hunger strike yeah. when she was six years old <laughs> in her school because, I don't know, it was, a, and then she had another strike because they refused for a girl to participate in a mathematics contest. Mm. And because of the strike, she was, by, she had to do it and she topped. Yeah. topped her district and the story after that has been you know magical mm. after that but it's it's we are riding on the shoulders of 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 of, of greatness yeah. and, and i keep saying we have to exert ourselves in eco measure yeah. we may not necessarily be you know it's blood and sweat involved but the generation coming after us should have it better. I'm really hoping that the generation coming after us, I will call them the beautiful ones or the restful mm. ones, the restful ones who don't have to question. The Gen Z is a soft life. Yeah, like they don't have to question, you know, you walk into a space and you question your color, you <laughs> yeah. know, is it, is your, a part, gender your gender, well. yeah. your, your woman, or, yeah. you know, as women in. I mean, I mean, I like women in tech. 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 Yes, we are women in tech. Here, this. You're going to say, oh, you're going to say this is very Afro pessimist. But I think we are, we are being a woman today. Today, a woman, a black woman, a woman in tech. It's like having a disability, right? Because you, you really have to. The, the systems were just really not designed for you mm -hmm. to be included. So I guess that's also the, the part. But I also feel that we have, we were very lucky. I, I call, I think, Olga, we, we always talk about how lucky we are because we found ourselves, we continue to find ourselves in places that remind us that there is a place for 
you can call it delusional people Delulu. or rebels or people who choose to push the, the um, to kind boundaries. of like push 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 the boundaries but we also my first experience with it is not possible was in university we grew we, we, we were in a utopia in a high school where you were told you the world is your oyster mm -hmm. so we were never you know conditioned to believe that you know, there's something that we couldn't do because that's how we were, we were mm. trained. And I keep saying, by the way, that naivety is something that I see a lot. It continues a lot. This, this reckless optimism that the world is actually the, your oyster. Yeah. There's no bad days. Like, detached from material circumstances. Yeah, mm. there's that. So maybe that has also helped yeah. that I don't necessarily um, feel like it's a burden because we've also been incredibly lucky that we find ourselves connecting with uh, people who vibrate at that same frequency. Mm. Mm. Okay. So that's that's where. Um, yeah. okay. But it's a yeah. task. It's a task that has to be done. Mm. All the generation after us will wonder why we failed them. Yeah. If, if people wanted to, they've been ignited by what you've said now. <laughs> Right, okay. you know, Have like, you like for me, me, I'm always, 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 you know, to the unpacking PLE performance across districts, yeah. which is another conversation. Why but do they put them in newspapers too? I know at, at a time it was, you know, maybe yeah. you needed to know. Because yeah. how else are you going to get the information? No, but, you oh. need to know. But now I'm like, why, is, why are they putting... I find it very ideological that it's, uh, this was the first girl. She got four points. You too can be here. And then there's a grading of the schools. And then there's like, it's, it's, a, it's very mixed in You too business. can be here. Yeah. And I'm just like, you yeah. guys, what the? Yeah, yeah. you too. It's like yeah. Yeah. You too can have no, a No, because it was always used as, it's like when parents tell us, oh, you know me, I was the first. I, I think all they're all time. hiding. I'm like, I wish I could see, see what point. you're actually doing. Yeah. Because as I've grown older and I've found, you know, our parents, it's a weird thing that you're saying. I think we see them in their roles. We see yeah. them as this symbolic of, this is my mother. mother. So when I said my mom, mm. I am talking about how she relates to me. I'm not as seeing her as a woman, as a yeah. child, as a worker. And in all those foibles and all those things, yeah. it has actually helped me to forgive her for certain things I thought she couldn't yeah. give me. Because at that time, I was just seeing you as Provider. perform your role. Yes. Yes. And then other things change. Mm. So I, I sometimes see that when they, those um, messages that are put forward, I understand it's to create, like what you said, create optimism hope. and hope in people. It's possible. But at a certain point, if you are, if you overindulge on that and then you hit a crisis mm. or you I think that's where the pessimism comes yeah, in yeah, yeah, someone yeah. gets disappointed because they thought man I, the my promise. willpower I'm mm. it's, it's like um, I don't know if you guys read The Secret we watched first of all I'm sorry someone <laughs> got me a copy of The Secret <laughs> we watched I read it secret. I read it and I was reading it like this huh <laughs> like they, yeah. I understood what they were trying Point to get to, to mm -hmm. but I feel like huh, this is going to sound very abstract I feel like it's very hard for you to center yourself, mm -hmm. but if you have some authority center you, mm -hmm. it's very comfortable. So if you go, um, the universe is working for, for me. Good. It's very easy for me to now occupy this space because yeah. that part of you that goes, hey, first wait, aren't you the same as everyone yeah. else? You're yeah. like, no, 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 but the universe is the one that's Special telling me that I'm powerful yeah. so I can manifest what's happening. Yeah. But the thing that was interesting for me was it was about my you. It was saying the whole universe it's is working. here for you. Even yeah. in church, I understand what it means when mm -hmm. they say, Jesus would have died if only for you. Mm -hmm. I think that can go in the wrong direction mm -hmm. because it mm -hmm. then just becomes, it's all about me. Mm. The world features in my story. Mm. Yeah. All mm. of you mm. are kind of part mm. of my narrative. Yeah. And I suppose why I'm saying mm. that I wanted to find out how can you, how can people get into mm. reading the things that you've read, mm. exposing themselves to that. Because what I'm hearing as a thread in what you're talking about is it's not enough for you to be enlightened, for mm. you to go, yeah. oh, I've sparked it, but yeah. that it, it, for, the, for the, the, the bush to get on fire, you need to get other yeah. pieces of yeah. things on fire, and you need to ignite other individuals. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess that's why I was curious about mm -hmm. how you found each other, You've, you know, you're sort of keeping the fire going, yeah. but how do people find people who they, they are can? People. Yeah, because you're easily yeah. surrounded by guys who are going to tell you, what are you talking about? You're just yapping. This thing's yeah. African rising. That was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that's why I was curious. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a I think for me, it goes back to what Olga said earlier. Know thyself. When you know, I think yeah. when you know who you are, 
and it's 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 when your I don't know the ability to rip yourself apart to be able to build yourself and then be able to I don't even have the terminology for that but like your validation or your sense of self is not external now it doesn't come from outside now a lot of people again status that's why we're all craving status mm. symbols we're struggling with all this anxiety it's because we are we, we want to be liked um and 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 accepted i think belo look we have look all looking for this sense of, mm -hmm. of belonging and that's why i mean that's why communities are are born and that that's how we thrive um however there i think there is a place for when you know who you are when you when you can be independent an independent entity and recognize the collective so it's not a conditioning that we should you know they say all oh, communities that you have a I think there's a, a theme as to why there has to be yes like yeah. a shared some value. Cream, some yeah. Nah, uh, value. There, there has to be some kind of shared value. And I don't think you really need I think what what I found very fascinating is figuring out what your that value is because when you know my value then I have the grace and appreciation to recognize Olga's value without trying to get Olga mm. to you don't have to be exactly like me, and I also am yeah, not threatened. Yeah, I'm not threatened. Yeah, and I can recognize the the independence in the collective. Now, when you have those people, and I think that's why people are frustrated with rebels or artists. I, I use artists because artists usually they have mm -hmm. done a lot of self, um, you know, and and they come off as free mm -hmm. beings. So people fear the free pass, the person who comes off as a free but a free body a free because spirit. a free spirit it's, it's a bit frustrating because how come you're free yeah why i i, I understand the work you've had to do my mind is pointing me in too much too many directions but it's this whole thing of self-discovery mm. i think people go on this journey of self-discovery everyone does but do you like who you find mm -hmm. so most people don't like who they find and they say ha please Whoever that person is, I can't yeah. reveal you to the world. Yeah. Let us I mean, just push fashion, you back in. Please, 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 please. Let's yeah. just fall back to, yeah. to, to normality and uh, let's fit yeah. in, right? Yeah, yeah. So wh anyone who has worked on that self-discovery journey and has been able to find that, this is the loner. But do I really like the loner? Will mm. the world like the loner? And therefore, I fall back to assimilate because I know that maybe the world will not like loner. So we become frustrated when we see people who have broken out of their shell and look like they are free mm -hmm. and then we're like i want your freedom but i don't want you to do to the do work that. because it's lonely over there yeah. now when it's lonely over there i think the loners my name the loners oh let's cancel the podcast <laughs> yeah. oh. the loners that's the thing i figured that the lo lone l-o-n-e-r mm -hmm. That you have to unfortunately be a lone ranger to be able to recognize the fire in other people. Mm. And then Say we, that again. I think you have to be able to be a, like a lone ranger a lone, to be able to ranger. recognize the fire, the fire in other, other people, people yeah. without thinking it's competition. Like, yeah. let your, your yeah. light, yeah. I can find your light. Your light will shine, yeah. I, I am all for looking And you're not for, threatened. Exactly, like by, it's, it's your light. Yeah. It's, it's your light. And now when we begin to and now when you have your light you can recognize someone else's light without mm -hmm. trying to curate I them recognize my light <laughs> what is your light when, now? when a funnier <laughs> person joins the group <laughs> so yeah i hate you <laughs> so anyway that, that, i'm digressing but the point yeah. no I'm, I'm taking us in a very different direction but yeah. that's the point is when you have those lights then those lights form a, a bigger, community yeah. who recognize your tiny role in this bigger complex systems thinking really that butterfly one butter bu 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 bu, yeah. the tsunami that's what happens but it, it needs mm -hmm. is it pascal is it dirac i don't know the guy who said that if you pluck a petal on earth it shifts ah, a planet it shifts, it shifts a, a, a planet i don't mm. know one of those bodies so yeah. that is rick now if that's one petal so the way we are all hyper connect we are connected in a way but we find ourselves 
looking at everybody as either competition or you know but you're like if, yeah. if if you've done the, the groundwork then you're in position to recognize and i keep saying i love i, I see I, i'm a love of beautiful things i see beauty everywhere and it's really because olga's light is very different <laughs> from joel's life and that's it can right. never be yeah. the same that's right but yeah. trying to guys this is the standard procedure in this house this is how we operate and mm -hmm. that's why you find there are people outcasts the rebels who break out because they're like i don't fit in the tribe mm -hmm. so so then those rebels, who are those lone rangers, find themselves and aggregate. And those are the people. And that's what we really want to do. Because mm. everybody has that ability. Mm. And then we have the butterfly effect. Because it's not me going to shift everything. Yeah. It's I recognize that I am a tiny bit in the bigger puzzle. Mm. But then there are thousands of millions and billions of of tiny bits who need to vibrate at the same, same frequency, frequency. Hit resonate frequency yeah. and everything busts and that's and really that's basically how you start what it a is. movement that's it that's how i look at it please there's only one movement in this country <laughs> ah. <laughs> archers <laughs> ah. yeah. um anyway. one last question for yeah. me yeah. um why did you call it arch why yeah. why did you choose a podcast why is it that you're yeah featuring all of this and if you could speak to someone who's been trying to get out there you know um, venture because it's easy to be in your room and think all these nice things but mm. it's a different mm. thing to put yourself uh, on stage or to put yourself out there yeah. Yeah. Would you just maybe talk about why mm -hmm. you're doing what you're doing now and what would you say to someone who's thinking about mm -hmm. you know stepping out there and doing something yeah okay um, why is it called art if you watch the opening montage of <laughs> our AI generated uh, opening oh, trailer. Yeah. It's going to hit all the words. Yeah. Innovative AI. Yeah, innovative AI. Gener <laughs> we, we, we really yeah. thank generative Silicon AI Savannah. for those, You're going those to images. Mm. <laughs> Giraffe. All right. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's yeah, it's in our opening montage. Should we give it away now? Please do. Okay. Well, that's very special. Okay. Mm. So arch stands for um, the symbolism of an arch or arc. Arch. In a house. It's a passage, right? So the architectural people know mm. that when you build a arch in a building, it's a passage where you can like go through from one one room to another. So it's mm. a sort of like a transition. Mm. Heaven's gates. Mm. Well, okay. transition. Heaven to heaven's um. flames, you know. <laughs> <laughs> not just bring the one side. Don't make this mean, dude. You're talking so, about putting people on fire. Right? Yeah. Spark it. <laughs> Hell's <laughs> Come, come, come! Oh, I never it's imagined so the gates of hell. I don't yeah. even know what it looks like, but I know there's like an arch. Yeah. And the and colorless of light and stuff, but anyway, go on, go on. It's very bright, right? Bright. It's hot. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's keep going, yeah. And also because arch is, um, so as it's a pre if you use it as a prefix, you can use it as a prefix and use it as a suffix. Ah. Mm -hmm. So, that is to To us, 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 yeah. Archetype, different, Archetype. you know, yeah. jobs of people, architect, yeah. building, archer, yeah. 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 Yeah, archer as well. Arch bombola. <laughs> Arch bombola. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think Lona didn't like that name at the start. So she's like, hmm, let me go think about it deeper because. Yeah. I'm I'm not, I'm not, we were, I'm there was a lot of banter on this particular topic, and that's. In, then you just, it, I didn't think about it. Yeah. it actually, we were just all this African renaissance. African renaissance, yes. what do we need? Yeah. And then I was like, no, but you need courage and hope. Yeah. Courage and hope. Yeah. That's it. Mm. So and then that's just how, but the arch was already set. It's yeah. just that then in our unpacking of the African renaissance, it's like, no, we actually, what we're looking for is courage because it takes a lot of <laughs> mm. courage to become that lone ranger to be able to return to the park. Yeah. And then hope is just to believe. To believe. If you, mm. can, if you can believe, then you're hopeful. Mm. Yeah. And I think that to me then summarizes what then Arch yes. um, yeah, yeah, re yeah. Re re represents. And it's, um, as, as Olga said, it's like you, the matriarch. It's our newsletter is archiving Africa, representing the, the documentation, the historical lens in which 
we see the future. But anyway, I'm interrupting. Yeah. Continue. How yeah. the how do well, we how do people sure find sure. it? So how do, to, you how do people walk together. how do people get yeah. to, get to um, to yeah. to um, yeah? So start Instagram to uh, start their own arc. Mm -hmm. mm. So right now we are setting the foundation okay. um, because we believe in the power of community. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Again, going back to actualizing your purpose through content, coaching, community. The mm. content side, I think, speaks for itself. Lona talked about the power of media mm. and what people are mm. watching, what people are seeing, is essentially what they'll become. Well, it influences what yeah. they become. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what do we want people to see? What do we want people to hear? Um, and what do we want to influence them to become? Yeah. Um, so for our, as I said, pilot season, being the matriarchs, it's really paying homage to um, these women. But we want to unpack other topics. We want to unpack topics around, um, you know, uh, beauty in Africa. Mm -hmm. But speak about it I'm from. A fan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I he likes everything. Beautiful yeah. Africa. Yeah, beauty in Africa. Uh, what does that I actually mean? <laughs> 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 Um, talking about um, women who've built um, product services around um, addressing climate change. Mm. Um, women who have played a critical role in financial services as well. So like the history or evolution of money, but more from women who have built solutions, uh -huh. either working in you know, fintech very early days, seeing this evolution occur from... Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> not caricial, not as far back, okay. yeah, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not as far back, but not, not we that need far. To give that butter check, no, yeah, continue. Uh, that will be episode zero so of that. Seeing that, behind that, the scenes of yeah, how things are that, that, that's episode seeing. zero of that that, 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 that particular piece, yeah. Um, but also trying to create a future because we, we want to see how to, you know, create animations and like movies, yeah. futurettes around how we see the future, okay. so. Documentation. Documentation. I think that's also a big part of it, yeah. yeah. And also building on what Olga said is we, um, as you said, that the noise of Afro-pessimism is louder. Mm. Like sometimes you find, I'm sure there are so many people who believe that there's, there's something they can do or they want something better for either themselves or by extension um, the generations after them. But then because of, again, we are shaped by what we hear, I read, and you, you're then you begin to accept that maybe I'm chasing the wind, maybe I'm crazy, maybe let's just, uh, this is not um, something I can you know, possibly do and then I just fall back. So there's lots of frustrated conversations that we hear, especially people who have, are in their late, I think in their 30s into their 40s, because they have, you know, they're at that point in their career where they have, oh, what's happening? <laughs> Joel is, is in a transition. He's in a transition. You know, it's like the same group. Yeah, so I think there's this group that has, um, you know, done the work. They have accumulated some, you know, kind of like resources, but they recognize mm -hmm. that there is, there is more, yeah. you yeah. know? And there is that um, actualization or realization that yeah. um, people call it a midlife crisis, but there are people who are like, eh, is, is, is this, this all? Is this all? Is this so there's it? that yeah. group that's saying, is this really it? Mm. And we hear a lot of those conversations. But because of the, the, the noise, you can easily accept that. Maybe that's not for a Ugandan girl. Mm. Maybe that's not for a Ugandan. Maybe it's for people who are in Silicon mm. Valley. Or it's an a Harvard thing. You know, it's, yeah. it's too far away. And why we find ourselves also escaping from this kind of noise is... Um, there is a conditioning that if you're in Uganda long enough, you will begin, there are certain things like expectations, societal things that, you know, the friend groups are doing, the, investing in the same business. <laughs> the, 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 anyway, the dreams are almost <laughs> shared. 50 by 100. And you can't say it. That like, okay. like No, no, no. So they're, they're like <laughs> shared, yeah. shared, mm. shared dreams. But then if I step, as she said, Nigeria, our peers, the conversations they're having are different. 
So I realized it's a positioning thing, it's a placement mm -hmm. thing. In fact, one of our men, my mentors, <coughs> when we were still in uni, um, she, the, one of the girls, one of the girls she was, the collective she was mentoring said, and people like, oh no, uh, now that I've studied, you know, I will not be able to find a husband in Kenya. And she said, if that's the problem, we will move you mm. to where you will find people who will not be frustrated by you. But when you live in that space, yeah. you begin to think this is all. But the world is your oyster. So I think for us, we recognize that there's that group and we want to just create a um, um, <laughs> safe space. A movement. Uh, a, 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 place, a movement, a canvas, a canvas of dialogue. <laughs> Nobody is telling you what to do, but it's, it's really a canvas of dialogue mm -hmm. um, for that particular group that truly believe or are restless. Ah, the restless ones. Mm. Because deep inside they know there is something more yeah. as we build towards the restful ones who will mm. be born. That's really what it is. Yeah. I and think. we're also using the power of books because we have a partnership with Mahiri Books. Mahiri Books, yes. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> building that reading culture to escort yeah. and accompany, like, the content that we put out. Okay. Yeah. First yeah. principles. Yeah. Okay. Like, he's thinking. What? Ah, not <laughs> No, like, first and zero principle thinking. It goes back to the thing about values. Yeah. Is where, where, what's your, where, where you ground yourself, because most people also don't. They may know it, but not able to articulate it. So, yeah. mm. so that's also very important. First principle, zero principle thinking to allow you then build your mental blocks and then how you view the world and then how you can contribute. So yeah. bottom up. Yeah. That's basically it Ladies. in a nutshell. Uh, I think. Go ahead. Yeah. As the only father who is here. Excuse oh, me. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. So, Someone for, calls me that. For, for, forgive me oh, if wow. I'm a bit. No. <laughs> it's nice. not that kind of podcast. <laughs> forgive me if I'm a bit, uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, this is not how it used to be before, but now I'm very cautious on what the future generation kind of things. Mm -hmm. Because we may be so hell-bent into reminding them about the past, uh, building them right now in the current, mm -hmm. and also maybe like fostering what they'll be in the future, but mm -hmm. maybe that's not what they want. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you, you introduced me to Dian Vimal, the <laughs> Indian master, who mm -hmm. have really got deep You're now into, listening to the guy, I Yeah, <laughs> subscribe to all these things. Yeah. He, talk, he talks about happiness, on how we just need to let the young people be happy. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, what have we done? Mm -hmm. Our greatest minds created nuclear bombs. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, people who dug deep into who they are, uh, I mean, that's where we get Hitler from uh, and who and stuff. Yeah. So maybe as we do this, and you, yeah. you talked about like to, uh, adding their voices, into, which I think is very important, like yeah. having the younger generation yeah. into we think this, but also get their perspective yeah. on, on yes, I mean, like you, you are part of the struggle, you are the majors, the generals, all these guys who fought, mm. but it's not a time of peace. Yes. Like, yes, women couldn't do yes. this, they couldn't do this, but now it's a time of peace. Yes. Women can, they can become yes. presidents, they can do this, they can write books, they can, like, how do we understand the times when there is now peace? Mm. And how do we help maybe push to mm. what's next? Mm. But someone said after peace, it's, it's liberation, right? It's in liberation. Well, because you, you can <laughs> no, be peaceful, but, uh, but we not are liberated. Not liberated. Yeah, so maybe liberation is like the, like the thing you were saying. Yeah. I, I wonder about it because when I was going to uni, I had this thing that oh my my dad is going to want me to do this, mm. and I picked my course because of him. And then he said, "I'm not going to live your life." Mm. And probably the best gift he gave me. This also reflects in my belief in. Well, some people think it's a heretical Christian belief. Mm. But I think that we constantly want to have someone telling us where we're going to go. Mm. Yeah. And the best gift, this is my interpretation, it might not be what you guys yeah. have. I think the gift that we can give the people who are coming after us is, we fought our battle, this is what we've learned, yeah. but you decide yeah. where you're going to go. Because I, I didn't have the burden, I, I didn't have the burden yeah. of having to live up to his expectations. Yeah. And yet they were high. In fact, I put those expectations into him. I said, oh, he's going to expect me to become an engineer. He's going to expect me to do this and all of that. Yeah. And when I achieved those things, mm -hmm. and I came saying, are you proud? He said, I was proud of who you already. were already. Mm -hmm. The rest was gravy. That, first of all, that Such was the one day I was about to weep. I was like, the, I w I've been pushing myself yeah. with to this burden to try and get somewhere. Yeah. And yet when it was taken off of me, there was also the fear. Mm -hmm. And that fear was, who am I now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because... I think sometimes we identify even the pessimist thing. At least you know who you are. Even if someone says yes. you're a bastard, you're like, yes. at least I'm a bastard. I yes. know who I am. But then if you <laughs> have to create you? yourself, it's such yeah. a crazy thing. And yeah. I, I, you know, you sort of mentioned it as finding yourself. I always look at it as creating yourself. Like mm. as I do things, as I explore, mm -hmm. I start to look back and say, oh, I've now become this person. Yeah. 
And I think that's quite a, a hopeful message. There's a, I think St. Augustine said something along the lines of uh, hope has uh, two beautiful daughters, mm. anger and courage. Mm. So you have to first get angry and say things shouldn't yeah. be this way. Yeah. But then courage takes you the step of doing something. Too, yeah. And perhaps what you've captured and what I'm hearing is that a lot of us are stuck on anger. We're stuck on distaste. Yes. And that you usually have to drown yeah. out. Either you distract yourself yeah. with it or you, yes. you know, convert it into irony. Something, you yeah, make yeah. mockeries. But courage, it takes courage to be sincere. It takes courage mm. to actually believe in something, to mm. actually move. Mm. And to me, any time I hear that, I'm really impressed. So I'm yeah. really... Uh, you guys are oh. in my day. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Joel. And Joel, thank you so much. Because... Yeah. As we're trying to come up with what this thing was, mm -hmm. you were one of the people that we spoke to, mm -hmm. um, and you gave such great yeah. insight into, yeah. you know, because um, we're, we're trying to get into the content creator game from our <laughs> our stable <laughs> jobs. <laughs> but I think you giving us that push of you start and you see what happens, mm -hmm. right? It mm -hmm. was, yeah, we appreciate that. And I mean, courage. She she got yeah. away from the background. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, I am an, 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 an she's a real person. Out. She's not a hologram. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, yeah. Like that question you asked, and we yeah. haven't. We talked about the, the, the generational mandate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's what you know you are you are alluding to that each each we are not telling them how they should live, mm. but we need to build give them the, the tools infrastructure yeah. to be able to thrive in the way that they choose to thrive. Yeah. But if there is no infrastructure, then what they have to do is go back in time and try and build those enabling <laughs> frameworks and do the work we should have done so we would have robbed them the generate mm. a whole like and I think that's where we find ourselves we are fixing problems of 30, 30 years 40 ago. years ago yeah um the 1986 class found them uganda 1962 we were liberated mm. however a new liberation the, between then and 86 86 well that's 20 over 20 years late 25 years later they are trying to do the job of 1962 mm. class of here we are 19 yeah mm -hmm. Class of 90, fam. Okay, where we are now. No, no, no. This group now, our generation, <laughs> yeah. is frustrated because we, we can't necessarily build forward because there is, we, yeah, we, we just have to go back. Yeah. We have yeah. to go back, build basic things for us to even be able to move forward. And that's why we, I, I keep arguing of why futurism becomes a very important body of study yeah. of why we can dedicate 75% to focus on today's most pressing issues, jobs, um, homelessness, um, hunger, poverty, disease. We need to give, allocate or train a 25% who spend their time anticipating and building for that generation well, forward. So that, yeah. that generation that comes continues. They are not coming back. To, to fix problems. So which, that's why yeah. I was very fascinated. Mm, what yeah. is our generation's mandate? Mm, and yeah. what do you think the ge generation we handle, we've done our part, guys, by what is your mandate? Because yeah. that to me is, is, is where we find ourselves today. But maybe to the point of where is the current generation, mm -hmm. well, the younger generation actually getting its, feeding itself from, mm -hmm. its external. Yeah. yeah. So, you know social media really mm. dictates the way mm -hmm. you know gen z lives their lives yeah and i think there is this disconnect between the reality that we are here now uh, you know uganda mm -hmm. or africa trying to fix certain things versus them seeing kim kardashian and saying ah i want to aspire to be kim kardashian mm -hmm. right so i think it's about as you said giving them the right infrastructure and tools mm -hmm. to okay what's so i'm not going to say ha. Ah, let me rephrase that question um Kim is a businesswoman. <laughs> I actually respect the business ah, hustle side of right, but what what are the what are the things that they can learn from who they are looking who Kim to? Kim is or who? No, not not not, not not in the sense of what really Kim. Yeah, but the the business aspect, for business instance, market. right? Because mm. there's kids who are actually starting businesses. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's Gen Zs who are doing the whole influencer hustle. Admire that, but. Sometimes I see the content and I'm a bit care. Um, okay. Yeah. This, how do we guide it in a in a productive yeah. way? Yeah. 
right? Um, in a productive and helpful way. Yeah. So that's the tools and infrastructure to guide and nurture them. Mm -hmm. So what's our generation's mandate? It's <sighs> a good And point. remember, Gen Zs, honestly, I bundle them as our generation. Do you? I think so. Because I would put our <laughs> gener I, I think the next generation become your children. There has to be some, Gen alpha. some very good gap. Mm. Yeah. So 10 years is not a... Not a so a, our a generation, generation, and then what's your hope for your children? And you say, kiddo, guys, this is what we hope you guys find. Yeah. We've given you the rails. The tools and rails. I think to... To understand who they are yeah. and how they can build a better society. That's ours or theirs? Ours. And theirs? It's for them to decide. I can't speak for them. Yeah. Okay. But for me as me, for I'm like, know, oh, this is our things are going crazy. What can I, understanding who I am, yeah. my community, um, what can I do to make things better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think for me, I think our generation's mandate, can similar to what you said, is the return. Like it, it's strongly around self-identity. What is blackness? What's African? What does that even mean today in a contemporary world? Knowing that we are, you know, globalized, we are not necessarily, you know, just here. Um, so that, that, that sense of identity, where does it come from? What does that look like? Um, I lean towards black consciousness because there's a confidence in, 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 in knowing, knowing um, that you're not less than because of some um, institutionalized um, systems that have made a certain group believe that you know, they're more powerful and another a little, a little bit less. So for me, that's, the, that, that's one. The second one, 100%, I think our generation's mandate is economic transformation. I think the generation before us, their job was just financially free. Do like, I don't know, some bit of, can we just, you know, but for me, I think it's absolute economic transformation. Mm -hmm. And for, for wealth building, I think it's building wealth and generational wealth, like, seriously. Um, not as an individual, but as a collective. As a collective. Yeah. And then the third, for my, my anticipation or hope for what the next generation's mandate would be is restfulness and mm. abundance. That, that's how I would, I would put it for them. Mm. Yeah, that's. I can't add anything. Joel, what is your Joel, generation? what is mandate? your generation? What she said. Uh, and, and then <laughs> tell us about the girl and the yeah. daughters, yes. Yes. What? W what? And Alan in. No, yeah, Alan, and Alan, Alan, Alan after. Alan is going to close. Yeah. Yes, Alan. Alan is going to close. Because yeah. we have said everything you've said. Well. I, I, I can't. I can't give um, a clear-cut answer. I suppose f um, I have a tattoo here, which is of an owl, and the reason I have that owl is the owl of Minerva, and the story behind it means that you you can only know what an age means mm. when it has come to its end. Mm. So I feel like what you're describing mm. is the end of a certain period, yes. and that's why I like the name Ark. Yeah. Like, yeah. So Tell what yeah. we can define is what we are leaving behind. Yeah. And the only thing that I think we can give to other generations, I'm, um, I'm, I'm reading Capital again, mm. Marx's Capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a bit in the notes where he said that nothing that he's describing will be set for the future. Mm. That all he's saying is I'm describing the time and I'm seeing a shift from a certain mode of yes. production to another. another yes. Because the people who are born in that mode of production will take it as a given. Mm. You won't question commodities, you won't yeah. question those things, but he could question them because he was seeing them emerge. Mm. So I think for us it's to articulate what our age means mm. so that then the next people can pick up from that. I can't yeah. say, like the same way my father couldn't say to me, yeah. do this. Mm. All he could do was describe where he came from, the world he was in, give me some mm. tools and say, mm. go right, ahead. Do yeah. it, yeah. Alan, the last word is yours. <laughs> I uh, usually can't do this after Joe, but since this is like a bit personal and I have experience, I think I can try. Uh, we talked about um, opti uh, previous uh, past optimists and now they're what? Pessimists. Mm. I think that like tells a story of my life because my life starts as an optimist. Bri optimist, the world is bright. You're the future with no, 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 you'll be in the papers. Eh? Yeah. And then my, my mom, single mom, did her best, was cleaning houses, and takes me to her job and tells me my back is starting to hurt 
we're going to take over. Mm. So then, pessimist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is gone. This is the way. Yeah. <laughs> and then from that, I uh, mean, did that traverse, got into all this living better and stuff. And then, like, I can say budding optimist now. Like, I'm becoming an optimist a bit. And now the message I tell my, like, my daughter enrolled into film school, thinking it will make me happy. And I told her, no, <laughs> like, you, you don't have to yeah. do this. Like, what makes you happy and what will make you money? Just do that. Mm -hmm. So I go with yours of like economic transformation. Like, mm -hmm. be happy, make the money, and maybe your future will be better and you won't have the trauma that the rest of us are, are carrying around. Yeah, yeah make so, new mistakes. Yeah, make, yeah. make, make new mistakes. and, and new yeah, mistakes. Don't repeat ours. Make new mistakes. Yeah. Learn, be happy, yeah. make the money. Was, for some people, that may, that may sound like only fans. I mean, don't do that. But yeah, be happy, <laughs> make money. Oh, Brilliant. Love that. Goodbye, friends. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do only fans, I suppose. Yeah. Or if you're doing it, I mean, go ahead. You know, make it your own. Uh, thank you, ladies, for coming. I really appreciate you making the time. Uh, and for allowing Alan and I to finally have a balanced podcast. It's always us, just guys talking. Yeah. It's really uh, a high value men, though. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Bye. Wow. Sorry, with high value men. I'm, I'm